sales and marketing roadmap, and I think it's always a battle out there of how to win more customers. And we've got Mark Waldman, president of MSP Sales Pros today, who's going to share some of uh, the insights he's gleaned over his many years in the business and help you guys drive more sales with a sales and marketing roadmap. Uh, my name is Lendi Costanzo, Senior Vice President of Community and Business Development. I always like to share that I was, in fact, a solution writer for about 20 years of my life. I started uh, my business way back in the 80s, early 80s, or actually mid-80s if you want to uh, kind of get really close to it. So I've been around quite a bit. I've seen a lot of change going on, and one thing that doesn't change is the need for sales. And uh, once we get through the a quick auto task overview, we're going to jump right into Mark uh, and get him into his topic of how to win more customers with the sales and marketing roadmap. Then I'll have a wrap-up. We've got a couple of special offers, and we'll jump into a question-and-answer session. And please feel free, as Rich said, to type your questions into the chat box, into the Q&A box throughout the session. This way we can actually check them out, maybe actually answer them while we're running through uh, the webinar and certainly be a little bit more prepared at the end. So first, just want to give a quick uh, Autotask overview and let all you guys out there who do not know Autotask give you a little bit about it and hopefully for our users, our clients, maybe shed a little bit more light on where we're headed. Uh, Autotask is the number one provider of cloud-based IT business management software. We've been in business since 2001, and we've been in the cloud since 2001. And while everyone's got uh, a lot of, there's a lot of excitement out there about cloud, uh, there were certainly uh, quite a few names before we got to a cloud-based uh, name. We used to be called an application service provider, uh, SaaS, and here we are now, a cloud vendor, very focused on providing service automation to the solution providers out there, the IT service providers, managed service providers. All of you guys out there deliver an IT service. Autotask is for you. Again, all about service automation, but it does start with winning new business. So right in our CRM module, as Mark goes through his session, some of the very things he's going to share with you, you can use our CRM module to help you market out to your client base, manage your sales pipeline, build quotes that actually fill that pipeline, and hopefully you're going to quote some projects out there and win some good one-time revenue before you move into a, a managed service or recurrent type revenue uh, relationship. And you can use our project module to manage that project, collecting all time and expense against your project. Make sure you're profitable. Perhaps you want to change your pricing next time you execute on that project. But our project module gives you phases, tasks, all the abilities that you have to manage a project. And once you're done with the project, send out that invoice. In fact, if you have a flat fee project, you can do one, two, three, multiple invoices tied to phases and tasks. And really show your client that you're on top of things and following progress along the project and only send them that invoice when you know you've met a milestone or, or a, a key date. And again, once you're done with that project, you move into that support role, use the Autotask service desk to open tickets, collect time and expense against those tickets, and whether you're going to bill in a time and material mode, perhaps you're going to bill incident-based, uh, or maybe you're going to bill against a recurring service contract, no matter what your billing relationship is in that support mode, you still need to collect time and expense and always validate profitability and once you collect time and expense, use Autotask to send out the invoice, or you can hand off the time and expense to your accounting system and create the invoice out of your accounting system. And while Autotask is all about service automation and helping you scale and automate service delivery, we do understand there's lots of you out there selling product, and we've partnered with a lot of quoting vendors out there to give you advanced quoting, e-sourcing, procurement capabilities, and storefronts. And you can take a look at our website and uh, see which vendor is for you and what solution fits your needs. We also know uh, we're not alone, not just on the quoting side, but we also have lots of integrations with monitoring applications, platforms that you're using out there, backup disaster recovery, all different kinds of accounting systems. And we're built to be open to allow those integrations to be built nice and easy and, again, looking to help you guys automate and scale your service delivery, minimizing double entry. As you can see, uh, we do replace it at least five different applications, and it really depends on how many you're using right now that can actually be covered with Autotask and all of our integration partners. And we're also uh, 
we also understand that you guys have your own network out there that you work with. Perhaps you're working with some peers helping you to deliver service, maybe trading tickets back and forth. We do have ticket sharing inside Autotask to enable you you guys who are Autotask users to, to work on this, uh, a ticket and share the notes and the comments. We've got a client portal that allows you to collaborate with your client base. A fantastic way for your clients to see what's going on on a particular ticket, open new tickets, see outstanding invoices, project tasks that maybe they have been assigned through the project module, but it's giving you a great opportunity again to collaborate with your clients. We've got Taskfire, which is basically the client portal uh, on steroids in a good way where those internal IT resources can use Taskfire and actually have their own internal ticketing system and service user requests from the client portal and automatically pass you work that you do for them or work that they can't do. And if it's a one-man shop, uh, they can automatically let you handle the account while they're on vacation or they're out sick. So take a look at Taskfire if you're working with internal IT resources and they don't really have a good ticketing system. We've got an online community in Autotask, over 50,000 users now, uh, all registered inside the community, sharing best practices, working together, and uh, sharing how to use Autotask the best way they can in their business. Autotask is global, over 200 employees in New York, London, Beijing, Germany, and Australia. Uh, our headquarters here in New York in East Greenbush, where I am coming to you from on a nice sunny day. Uh, we've got a pretty large office in London for those of you who are international with customers in over 55 countries, and that is going. We've translated our product to various languages. I always like to share that. People go, why? Because as we enter new markets, we're going to gen generate more revenue, and we are always putting more than 50% of our revenue back into the product. And as we've translated to Japanese, German, Spanish, French, uh, and Italian, we're going to be able to service more clients in more markets and generate more revenue. So the Autotask community will continue to thrive uh, going forward as we grow our product and, and grow across the globe. We've got data centers in the United States and in the UK, and more are coming as we uh, look to spread our data and uh, give you guys more redundancy. We've put millions of dollars in our data centers as it is, and uh, we continue to invest. Autotask is open. Uh, you can We are browser independent, so you can pretty much use Autotask in its entirety across any of the browsers that you're using today. And we also like to say anyone in your organization can use Autotask, not just billable resources, but your admins, your executives, your sales reps. Uh, you don't have to bill to make use of Autotask. And the key is whoever works into auto, in Autotask, all that data is going to be collected in one place and give you a fantastic repository for institutional data that you can have forever no matter where your employees go. We're open in the middle, we like to say as well, because you can configure Autotask to run the way you run your business. A lot of configurable workflow rules giving you the opportunity to make data flow as you want it to flow from CRM to service desk and on out into your client base. And uh, we're also open on the back end. I mentioned a few integrations earlier, but all of the solutions that you work with today and deliver to your clients, we've got an integration uh, with one of the key vendors or mul multiple vendors in that space. So uh, take a look at Autotask because we know we're not alone. We are open and we let you operate your business the way you want. And again, as that hosted application, once you buy Autotask, you're up and running uh, within 24 to 48 hours. We're putting out new releases pretty much every six to eight weeks. So as I mentioned, we're putting 50% of our revenue back in the product. You're going to see a lot of new features uh, show up in Autotask when you use it. And of course, you can use it or not, and uh, tons of education to help you learn the product. Over 25 live webinars and workshops every month, not only on the product, but on business building efforts, just like we have today on uh, building your sales pipeline. Uh, with Mark, we've got over 120 on-demand product training videos, as well as uh, many hundreds, if you will, recorded webinars from pricing and building your catalog and service delivery, SLAs. Uh, check out our website, as Rich showed. You can see a whole bunch of those holding boot camps and road shows as well. So one of the key things uh, you're looking for out there, you want to build up your client base. 
Uh, you don't want to be limited to how many clients you can manage. And one of the key things that Autotask brings to the table, along with Continuum, who's uh, sponsoring the webinar today, is a lot of automation. So an event uh, that may come about from Continuum's RMM, uh, putting a, an alert that goes out to the Continuum knock, that will automatically open a ticket inside Autotask, a client portal, uh, a user will be able to open a ticket automatically inside Autotask. An email can come in, open a ticket, and you can also open a ticket manually. But however you do it, it's very quick. In fact, it's automated when it's coming from Continuum, the portal, or an email. And in fact, a user call, you can open up a ticket inside of two clicks. And once that ticket is open, a lot of those automation features, a lot of those workflow rules that I talked about that allow you to configure Autotask to work the way you do, go into effect. Automated assignment of ticket to perhaps the engineer that's assigned to a particular account or a particular type of an issue. Notifications out that you've received that request. Uh, and again, to any of the resources, customers, or contacts that need to know. And the nice thing is, as you're moving into managed services, or if you're just looking to provide fantastic service, you're going to promise a response window, uh, something like, I'm going to respond within three hours, I'll solve the problem in four hours, and that SLA clock starts ticking inside Autotask and help you prioritize your work so that you can finish what you're doing and then jump into that next incident when you're ready and not necessarily let the client prioritize your work. And of course, as you open that ticket, we talked about collecting time and expense. Autotask gives you that opportunity to collect all the time and expense against the ticket, and then as you're done with that, en enter in the timesheets, approve and post that time, and send those invoices out again, either through Autotask or through uh, your accounting system. And if, once you're done sending out those invoices, nice, easy way for you to validate profitability. Tons of reports coming out of our live reports engine, customizable, automated, a lot of information at your fingertips. And as you're running through that incident management process, I mentioned response windows, three key metrics, response time, resolution plan, resolution time, all inside Autotask set up in an automated way so that perhaps your server response time can be two hours, your end user non-critical can take, uh, uh, you can provide perhaps a four or six hour response. The key is key metrics that you can monitor, measure, and manage to allow you to improve service delivery, and more importantly, help you validate that you are, in fact, doing what you said. And uh, right here, you see an SLA report. Every ticket opened up uh, that's been opened up, along with whether you met the first response with the green check mark, or perhaps you missed one. Perhaps you promised a 95% rate, or whatever it may be. You can quickly validate that you're doing what you say, and more importantly, use these as part of your monthly operational review meetings that all good managed service providers or solution providers look to have with their client base and show them some of the information, some of the work that you're doing. Again, not only validating the work you're doing, but also uh, validating that they, in fact, can pay your bill. On top of that, you got surveys and service delivery benchmarks built right into Autotask. You're going to have built-in surveys that you can use for your client base and send it out uh, as, uh, when a c automatically when a ticket is completed. And if you use the, service, the survey benchmark, those questions are the same across the 50,000 users in Autotask. And you're going to be able to see not only your rating, but how you're doing against the network average. And here you see on this particular issue, you're 20% better than the network average because you're at a 5 and the network is at a 4. So the nice thing here is you're going to get that immediate feedback from your client. At the same time, you're going to see uh, against that same benchmark survey how the network is doing. And you're going to know you're one of the best. That's a fantastic selling point, or it's a great reason to look to improve service delivery. So take advantage of those benchmarks. So we talked a little bit about managed services, but one of the key things that Autotask does do is it follows you along what I like to call the four critical stages to securing a client for life. Mark is up in a second, and he's going to share some sales tactics. And all of the sales and marketing uh, tips that Mark's going to share, you can start with Autotask because we do, again, help you along these four critical stages. So again, I mentioned managing your pipeline with sales and marketing and building your pipeline. 
dropping in your solutions and using the project module to manage uh, to success, and then moving into that support role, whether you're delivering managed services, time and material, whatever it may be. And over time, using the client portal, using TaskFire, uh, using the integrated products that come uh, that work with Autotask, ascend into that trusted advisor role or become that IT department for that SMB client and do it over and over again and maintain that relationship for life. It's tough enough to win a new client. Why don't you hold on to it and have all the tools in place that give you that opportunity. So again, Autotask is not only good for managed services, but really for any solution provider, service provider, consulting firm, ISV out there, because we do stay with you across the four critical stages to securing a client for life. So. Hopefully, uh, I shared a little bit of information that's valuable to you. It brings me to Mark Waldman, president of MSP Sales Pros. We've been working with Mark uh, for a couple of years now. Mark's been out there over 10 years in the industry helping MSPs transform their sales and marketing to drive business to the next level. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Hey, thanks for the, the intro, Landon. Very happy to be here today. So for those of you who have seen our webinars, our, our goal here is to bring you a tremendous amount of information in a very short time. Um, this isn't going to be a sales pitch. I have nothing here um, to sell to anybody, just a lot of training, a lot of good information to get you going down the right path to start landing more customers. And it's one of the things our clients do on a consistent basis is um, bring new customers on board, follow a process, follow a routine, and get the job done. So we'll move through the content fairly quickly. I like to uh, reserve enough time at the end for questions. We tend to get a Mark, also, if you have the slides that happen, if you all Looks like we're moving okay now. All right, so um, why do we need a roadmap? Again, apologize for the technical difficulties there. But the, the reason we need this roadmap is we have to be able to stop the confusion. And what we're going to see consistently out there without that roadmap is nothing but confusion. It's going to be day in and day out. We're not sure what we do. Um, when I walk into the office on Wednesday morning, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing to move our sales process forward to attract new customers. So the roadmap will kind of identify these things. You know, I always say that you know, if anybody remembers the show The Price is Right where you get to you know, uh, win a car. You, right, you have five numbers that are up there. You guess the numbers, and if they're right, you win the car. So people throw out their series of numbers, and they say, well, two are right. So the person changes them, and they may have changed the two that are right. They don't know what's right. They don't know what's wrong. It's nearly impossible to win. And that's a situation that service providers find themselves in. They're doing a few things right, a few things wrong. They don't know which is which, and they keep mixing it up, and it just never works. Right? So the roadmap will put an end to that. It's also going to give you that uh, repeatable, predictable, scalable process. So we've got to have those three things in our system. We have to be able to do this over and over again. We have to be able to predict uh, what those results are going to be, and we have to be able to scale it. And that predictability piece is really critical to your business. As a business owner, you need to look at your pipeline and say, this is what's coming in and we're confident um, that we're going to have these opportunities close within this time frame. So if we need to bring on more technicians, we're prepared for that, right? We know how to do it. We know when we're going to be growing. So we can do those things. Um, it's kind of the layout of the roadmap, right? We've got four keys to the success here. We've got focus. We've got the solution phase, the planning phase, and the execution phase. So what we'll do is, Let's walk through those. Look at the focus phase, and this is really trying to identify your target market. Who is it that you're going after, right? Who is that audience that you're trying to attract? So company size, um, the vertical markets, any of that stuff. You don't want to do a good job identifying that. So we'll step into that here. All right, so checkpoint one, the focus. And guys, I really do apologize for the technical difficulties. It just keeps flashing on my screen and it takes a minute to update here. So the types of businesses, right? The first thing to remember, SMB is not a target. And I hear that day in and day out when we talk to people, you know, like what markets do you focus on? And people say, well, SMB. You know, an SMB is anything, in, in my book, three employees to 2,500 employees. And if you're trying to, to market to that broad of an audience, you're going to have a, a very difficult time. So the first thing you're going to want to do is break it down into 
vertical markets. Um, uh, some samples, right? Legal, healthcare, retail, construction. And this isn't an ex is not an exhaustive list, but take the time to do that. And then you'll want to determine the size of the business that you want to target. So, you know, you don't want to go three to a hundred as a single target because uh, anything over.